I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright, and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto, giving us the millennial perspective. How you doing, Big Dave? Doing good. So you didn't come home today like you said you were. Yeah, you know, I woke up this morning and um, it just wasn't happening. You weren't <laughs> leaving, huh? You're not leaving, huh? Uh, you know, I got everything set up and, you know, didn't want to mess up a nice thing. <laughs> Do you know that that the prodigal son, right? It shall return. <laughs> well, we'll so- I'm waiting. <laughs> waiting for you to come home. All right, my friend. You got anything you want to rock? No, I think uh, I think I'm good, man. So let's go. Let's jump into this. We had great, by the way, great feedback on the thyroid episode yesterday. Uh, we had a little snafu with the sound, but you fixed that, right? Yeah, expected with the uh, the new setup, but shouldn't happen often. Yeah, it was it was kind of weird. So I'm listening to it, and all of a sudden it's silent, and I know exactly when that happened. Yeah, it, it, it's funny because you everybody who's the consistent listener, especially the the morning time people, you will hear the the tweaks happening. <laughs> Usually, if you listen to it in the afternoon, that the next day everything's been resolved. But like I said, it, it is a new platform. We're working on it, but. Uh, for us not being in the same studio um, for the last few days over. No, it's over coming out now. fine. It's been yeah. great for me. So, yeah, we have uh, a special interview we're going to do on the platform for the first time, too. So we'll see how that works out, too. Should be interesting. So this week, our topic is your life purpose. In today's meeting of the minds, we're going to have a discussion on becoming bold. So bold is defined as showing the ability to take risks, confident, courageous. This is an important definition that can be tied directly to the green zone energies of stress mastery. When you take conscious mind control, become mindful, find the now, you automatically enter the energy of being bold. Bold is showing the ability to take risks, confident, courageous. When you slow down, and allow the green zone to activate, you bring in the energy of 200 courage. The 200 courage energy is confident, strong, purposeful, I can energy, and it's this vibration that drives behavior to take risks and move out of the comfort zone. You understand the the vibration of it, right, David? Yeah, I got it. So bold people stand out from the group. They are looking for expansion. And instead of being in restriction, they are looking to move their life in some type of growth pattern. Now, all of us were born bold. We were born to take risks. If you were not bold, you would have never learned how to walk. Becoming bold is a choice. And since we were all born to be bold, becoming bold is actually, if you think about it, David, it's actually our natural state. But through the stages of development, that natural state to be bold is programmed out of us. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's how it, it reminds me because I always tell people, um, as we get older, we get realistic, and that's the characteristic that we lose, is that being bold. That's a great, yeah, that's that's a truth. Because think about this. By the time we're young adults, we become timid, skeptical, hesitant. These are all fear energies of the comfort zone. When we live in this state, we become passive, and we fall into a regular routine with unfulfilled goals and unfulfilled desires. See, becoming bold begins by simply slowing down. Ask yourself, am I living the life I am supposed to be living? Big question. If not, 
ask yourself, what do I want? What do I really want in my life? And then set the desire with a plan and be bold. What is being bold? Being courageous and just start. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think uh, people and everybody knows who these who they are in their lives, the bold people. Um, everything that they do is with an intention. You know, they're, they're really driving for something that everything they do seems like they know what they want out of what they're doing. And it's always seems kind of wild or out there to the people around them. But to them, it's normal. That's that's exactly right. So if we're looking and today we're talking about becoming bold. The first step in becoming bold is to be in that bold vibration. And there's ways of doing this. Like number one, I'll give you some ways of doing it. We can bend this by one. Pretend you're already bold. This is not a fake it until you make it scenario, but it's moving into the intention of I am bold to set this intention right out, literally write it out, what you would be like if you were bold. How would you act? How would you live? And if you were to create this bold image and visualize it, imagine it, and then act in it, your behavior will actually set you in the higher vibration of bold. But if you're not sure what bold looks like, David just said, there's somebody probably in your life who is bold. Pick someone you know and role model them. Or this could even be a movie character or a book hero. Look at how they behave, how they act, and how they move. Everything they do. Now, being a human being, we are hardwired for behavior, and this behavior is dictated by what's held in mind. Remember, 95% of your behavior is driven from the subconscious mind. So if you desire to become bold, you must, one, program bold into the mind. Two, you must practice the behavior of bold. So to program and create and to program bold, we want to create an affirmation and visualization. You can simply do this by inserting these into your green focus power hour. I am whole, perfect, powerful, strong. I am loving, harmonious, happy. I am bold. I am confident. I am bold. For the visualization, do something where you can picture in your mind this action of displaying boldness. Maybe you're presenting a plan for your business to investors. Or maybe you're leading a group for your favorite cause. Or maybe you're asking that person that you admire out on a date. But picture a bold move that would create the image and feeling of boldness. Dave, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's um, it, it's that stepping out of the comfort zone. You know, for me, like I said, I, I really um, equate being bold to being unrealistic. And I say unrealistic and it means it to other people, but it's going further than what the limits that you've set in your head. It's, oh man, that's impossible. And now we have an electric car. Oh man, that's impossible. We're taking people to the moon. Like when people make those affirmations of I'm going to do this, most people are like, that's impossible. But to those people, that's absolutely possible. And that wasn't a bold statement to them. So I like to think of those who are, if I could think of, if I think I can achieve it, what do other people think? And if it's like a standard, then it's not really bold. It's what is normal. I want to be out there and different. Yep. I, I, I've done well with you, son. I've done well with you <laughs> because this is the truth. Exactly what David said. Now, there is a way to practice bold. I want to tell you, I'll give you a practice of becoming bold. Spend one hour a day being the bold person that you just visualized and picked. Pretend you're them. Do something you would not normally do. Get into character. Connect to your purpose. Slow down and step into the role of bold. Understand, you are playing roles all day long anyway. The only difference 
By doing this, you are now intentionally playing a role. If you do this for one hour a day, I'm not asking you to do it all day, just pick an hour and be that bold person, I promise you in 30 days, you will experience a shift, right? Yeah, absolutely. It, that was a big thing for me in high school. Um, I wasn't a confident person. I wasn't a bold person at all. And when you look at me, you could see it. I walked slower, my head was down, slumped shoulders, all these things. And the people that I admire for their you know, charisma and they're always going out there, their energy was insane. They always stood up tall, they walked faster, they spoke with intention to it. And I just started to copy that. Not their full on actions of them trying to you know, go to NFL or do anything, just how they present themselves. And I started to become way more confident and bold in everything I started doing. And I know this works because anybody who's listening to this who went to high school with me knows that I was not bold. Mark <laughs> Middlestead will tell you this. He was something, but he wasn't bold. What happened was when I, when I hit 20 and I met Dan, my mentor, that's when I became bold. I would read books on Arnold Schwarzenegger. I wanted to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. I acted like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I acted like Dan, my mentor. I watched how he carried himself. He didn't talk. Didn't talk to him. His energy was so bold that everybody would do anything for him. Well, he was like six foot, 285 pounds, too ripped. But I mean, besides that, he stood out, but he would, he was very, his energy was bold. And that's what I learned is that I have to move with that vibration. You know, we build our reality through our vibration. So I learned in my 20s to build that bold vibration and that took me into the Navy. So I went into the Navy, a kid that never finished physical education tests all through school, and I was bold. And I walked in there, nobody knows me now. Now I can be who I want to be. And so I was bold and I ended up becoming the athletic petty officer for the entire company, for the, the entire base. Well, that goes, that's a quite a stretch from where I was four years earlier. Yeah, but again, way. yeah, and it's just being bold. So that's one thing. Now, number two, in becoming bold, make the first move. Fear is the comfort zone, people. Hesitation, especially when interacting with others, become aware and make the first move introduce yourself to another in a social or work situation. So when I started coaching our now partner, Patrick, some years back, Patrick stands six foot eight and he's not a skinny guy. He's a very good looking guy, very intimidated guy. And when we first started coaching, we were focused on his business. I soon realized that when Patrick walks into a room Everyone hates him because they're intimidated by him. They think he's a jerk. Now, they have not even talked to him. That's their activation. That's their conflict. Well, maybe they don't hate him, but they are intimidated by him. But this is totally unconscious. So I taught him, be bold. Every single meeting, when you walk into a room of people that you do not know, you go to each person individually and you introduce yourself. Immediately, this bold move made people actually like him, really like him. They thought, wow, this big guy, this handsome guy, he's so nice. Because they're actually expecting him to be a snob. And he's not. And sure enough, business increased. Now, you have to understand, to be bold and make the first move can... Be simple. It doesn't have to be a big thing like this. It could be giving your significant other a big hug and apologizing for over at, overreacting about something, even if that something was a few weeks back. If you're single, the big bold move, you can make the first move to ask someone out or buy them a drink. Remember, when you do this, you are bold. When you do this, I am bold. So, there's no expectations. You are bold. You're okay if they say yes, and you're okay if they say no. You are taking care of you. Thoughts? 
Yeah, I uh, it's funny. Patrick is a, a fantastic example, you know, and I've learned that from from him too. From the day I met him, his energy was just there, and it wanted me to introduce myself to him. And that was a uh, that was something that I also learned while becoming the super millennial into this business. I'm 25 years to 20 years younger than most of the people we work with, and most people took me as the kid. He's just a kid. He's just a kid. What I did is I I became bold. And I inserted my energy first instead of being passive, instead of doing things like this. And I really stepped into the role of whatever they were. I was the same thing, even though I was a different age and generation. And I honestly saw a huge difference in not only the respect level, but the way that people treated me. I wasn't kind of a, a bystander to the, the meetings and things like that. So it was as simple as not waiting to say, hey, my name's David versus, oh, this is my business partner, David. It's such small little things there, but yes. the people in the room understand the energy that be, is being exchanged there. And they, we know this is how we live on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's energy. So number three in becoming bold, do something unpredictable. What is something you could do that would completely surprise the people that know you? Maybe you could jump out of a plane. Maybe you change your style your hairstyle, your clothing. Bold people do not desire to live in the comfort zone. Maybe you're going to sell all your stuff and become homeless. Who knows? That's what I'm going to do. That's know, bold, right? <laughs> right? So I just, I, I have to understand, do something that is unpredictable. And you're doing this for you. Will you be uncomfortable? Yep. That's being bold. You agree? Yeah, absolutely. I think that small things each day that are bold to you, you're not, not necessarily bold to others, but it's stepping out of your own mindset of what is bold to you. I think that's the most important one time a day, at least. I remember when we did an event and you did your first talk. They brought oh you up God, to speak. It was at Dan's event, remember? Yeah, California. Uh, you had, yep. You had never spoke before and that, and, and you didn't even never. Yeah, I'll do it. Never spoke before in front of people and it went really well. That's being bold. Of course you were scared. Everybody, of course, it's outside your comfort zone. Yeah, and, and it's funny because I remember that moment right before I got up there. It, it was all the mindset that I had. Nothing, nothing about what I had to say, nothing about what I did up there changed. It was just before. I'm a professional. I went up there and that was the mindset that I went going in. If I was like, oh no, that's a lot of people. What if I mess up all these things? <laughs> it would have been absolutely horrible. That's playing the role, right? So number four, becoming bold. Ask for what you want. Now this could be a bold move, a bold move for most people. Most people rather sit back and wait. No, step up and ask become bold. The worst thing that can happen is they say no. So ask for a raise or a promotion that you have been working hard toward. Ask for a discount. I have one exercise where I send my clients out to go ask for something free. Now, I have them do this at a place where they regularly shop or spend money on a regular basis. So let's say they go to Starbucks and they used to go to the same store. And if you buy a Starbucks every day at the same store, I told them, go ask for the manager and ask for a free coffee. It doesn't matter if you get it or not. It's the bold action of asking. This will take care of the lack program faster than anything when you do that. Also, be bold. Call your credit card company and ask them to waive their annual fee. Or be bold and... And if you don't know something, be bold and say, explain that to me. Give me clarification. I don't understand that. People are so afraid not to know something today because you ask them, oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And they'll Google it right there. It's sitting in a meeting. <laughs> I'm watching them Google it. I know you don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But they don't, they're not bold enough to be in a beginner's mind and to say, I don't know. Your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's about the the risk of it, you know, to other people, yep. it may not be a risk, but as long as it is to you, I think that's the big thing because it's the mindset for you. There's some things like this, uh, this past weekend, uh, one of my friends, he hopped out of an airplane for his birthday, you know, went skydiving and 
that's not the type of person he is at all. When he came down, I'll tell you, he was a new man. It was insane. Yep. He walked. Chelsea the did that. The chest was up. The yep. smile was there. Yeah. And he goes, I need to start doing stuff like that more often. And that's the same thing with the little things that Bill's talking about. When you ask and you assert yourself, putting yourself there, and it, there's small little things that can change, you know, the whole energy within you. And even if they say no. Yeah. That's part of your practice. It's your practice of letting go. So what? Yeah. Okay. Say no. Then I would come back the next week and ask again. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I just think it's such a powerful thing. So remember when Chelsea and Kevin, they jumped out of planes for their birthday. Yeah. Chelsea, this now Kevin, 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 I could see doing it. Little yeah. Chelsea, <laughs> Chelsea was scared, but she came out of their eyes big. It was all, yeah, change. It does. It's a mm-hmm. life changing thing. Yeah, it's very, so number, very small things that you don't think. So number five, I'm playing on what you just said. Becoming bold is about taking risks now. Very important. Taking risks is not about being reckless. Reckless people actually do not accept risks. They don't even think about them. A bold person is well-versed and aware of the risks and decides to go for it. They're ready and willing to be okay if things don't work out. Those that are reckless jump into things and wonder why they didn't work out. That is not being bold. So David mentioned it a little bit. Think of the boldest people in history. In our history, they took risks, but they were not reckless. They might make mistakes because we all do, but hesitation and inaction can be a much bigger mistake than taking a risk. Because when you hesitate and you do not take action, you will set your vibration in regret and guilt. And this is when you go into your winter season of your life and you regret your life instead of really celebrating what you've done. So becoming bold, as we've talked about, is not about people around you. It's not being aggressive or imposing your viewpoint on them. Becoming bold is about you over coming your fears, and taking action. That's the key. So when you talk about taking a risk, taking a risk, like David said, for you, it might be something small. It doesn't matter. It's about you. Your thoughts. Yeah, I think um, you you said something that uh, a lot of people uh, misinterpret a lot, and that's the difference between risk and recklessness. You know, I think when people are reckless, they disregard the, the pros and cons of whatever they're going to do and the people who really take risks, I mean, be bold and take risks, it's calculated risks, but you're Different. okay with whatever happens on both sides, but you yes. know what should be the outcome of both. Recklessness is just, I don't care what happens. Reckless, you're in want. When you're, when you're reckless, you want something. You're reckless mm-hmm. and go in, right? Yeah. Well, that is not, that is not what we're talking about. Being reckless is not, is, is not, is not really being bold because when you're reckless, you want something. You're not even thinking. When you are bold, you have thought it out, planned it out, and you're moving forward. It might work, it might not work. But it wasn't because you you didn't do the best that you could in the situation. And even failure at that time works for you. Yeah, I've seen that a lot of people who are reckless fall into one of the wants. Always, always, David, always, because they want something so bad, they jump in without doing due diligence. I was working with a a client today, and there's a new business opportunity, and I said, you got to slow down and do your due diligence before you jump into this. This guy has a tendency to jump into things, and when it doesn't work, he doesn't, he wonders why it didn't work, because you didn't take your time. It could be a great opportunity. Wasn't calculated, exactly. That's not being bold. And like I said, becoming bold is not about the people around you. It's not about you being aggressive and imposing your viewpoint on them. Becoming bold is about you overcoming your fears and taking action. This is living life, experiencing life. And yes, taking a risk might lead to failure. Embrace the failure. Because it is, failure is not the opposite of success. Failure is a necessary component of success. 
The opposite of success is sitting still and doing nothing. It really is. So number six, becoming bold is, how am I doing on time, David? Because I, I don't have the clock on. It's my good. Minutes. Oh, good. So I better pick it up a little here. So becoming bold, number six, becoming, sorry that we have to ask on air. We're so professional. Number six, becoming bold is rediscovering who you are. Boldness stems from the creation mind. This is where our imagination lies and it's where our purpose is connected. The creation mind is your heart. Boldness comes from the heart. It's not about what you do. It's about who you are. When you discover your purpose, you rediscover who you are, your uniqueness, your connection to your true self. This creates drive in bold behavior, which sets a bold vibration, which ripples into the world and mirrors back into our life's bold results. So becoming bold is about living in expansion. No matter what energy you put out in the world, you get the same energy back. If your vibration is fear, stuck in a comfort zone, you will get more fear. Now, if your vibration is bold, encourage energy, you will get bold rewards in your life. If you don't take a chance, you cannot get the prize. This is how energy works. Everything is vibrational. You get back what you put out. Now, many people, and I will say, actually, you probably agree with me, most people do not put out a bold vibration. The reason? They are afraid they will get rejected or hurt or they will fail. To become bold, you have to change your focus. Focus on contribution. Bold actions add value in everything we do. Becoming bold is to step out of defended attack and to be the one who resolves the conflict, even if you didn't cause it. Becoming bold is allowing another to get credit without the need for you to be acknowledged and to be happy for them. Becoming bold is the ability to focus on gratitude, be grateful each day, even when things went a little haywire that day. Becoming bold is contributing to others' success, even if they do not return the favor. Becoming bold is closing the day in forgiveness, forgiving those who may have wronged you and forgiving yourself for getting stuck or trapped or streamed in the red zone. Becoming bold is letting go from your life anything or anyone who does not serve the higher good, especially your higher good. And becoming bold is owning our flaws. It's changing our belief systems. One of the most courageous things we can do is to let go of a belief that we used to defend and attack. It's admitting we just don't know. And becoming bold is having clear priorities of what drives your life and knowing these drivers serves the expansion of higher good. And becoming bold is speaking up when everyone is being quiet about an injustice. It's about breaking from your tribe and or the herd to defend those who may not be able to defend themselves. And so those are the things I see on Becoming Bold, David, because to me, Becoming Bold is a habit of celebrating the small wins and helping others to do to do the same thing. It, it really is to become a habit. Did I do okay on time? Yeah, we're still at 28 minutes, my friend. All right, so I still got another thing to go, but I wanted to hear your point of view on it. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think for, for me, when I hear bold, it's, it's when somebody's willing to live their life, you know, full vivid, fully mm -hmm. you know saturated to the full extent of what it is and not live down in a watered down version of what like your comfort zone is allowing you to live there's just so many people that we talk about why millennials don't want to work nine to fives or they don't want to do certain blue collar jobs and things like that is because yes we need that and for some people that is perfect but those who want to live bold and go out there there's things beyond that that take risk and certain people don't want to take that risk and the people who don't We'll work these jobs, you know. They'll, they'll... And you know, and, and there's nothing wrong with that because you could be. Yeah, I, I, I know when I was coaching football, I got to know a lot of people, and I know single mothers who were so bold, working two jobs, to make sure that their kids could get the education they needed and would not get caught up in the streets. That's bold. Yeah. That's them staying right. You know, it's not always our job it's not always our career it's just what we are doing 
for the expansion of humanity, mankind, our lives. So I, I've watched those, a few of those moms, those single mothers were amazing of what they did and they were tough. But their whole purpose was to be bold to make sure those kids did not get caught up in the streets because the streets of Miami are no joke. You yeah, know what I, I mean? I, yeah, when, when you become bold, you're, you're willing to to live through that what's unexpected, you know, the flip of a yes. point of risk. And then when you're not being bold, you know what to expect. You know what you're going to get in day in, day out, and you don't risk it the other way. And then you're ready for the un, the the unimaginable, the unexplainable when you decide to be bold. And that's the truth. So I'll close this episode with a challenge to everyone listening. Do one thing today that will set your vibration into bold. And remember, to become bold, one, you gotta put in the time and practice because we have to change the programming. Two, know that being bold is not acting cocky. It's being bold. It's not acting like you're better than. It's being bold. It's a different energy. Number three, leverage your purpose. Know your purpose, know your pendulum swing, know the red zone energies. I look at them all the time. You can see those red zone energies if you're caught in fear. If you feel yourself hesitating, leverage your purpose and step into boldness. Number four, journal your 30 day journey with a countdown. Day one of being bold. Tomorrow's day two of being bold. I did this. Day three of being bold. I did this. And number five, simply when you feel that you're in hesitation, avoidance, fear, when you feel worried, anxious, these are all comfort zone energies. Simply slow down and enter the bold energy of courage and get up and walk the walk. David. Yeah, I think this was a well-needed episode, you know, because I think right now uh, a lot of people want to play it safe, you know. And there's no problem with pay playing it safe as long as that's a part of your calculated um, risk that you're willing to do, you know. Playing it safe is you're knowing the risk and you're going to take it. Doesn't mean you can't be bold while playing it safe. I think that's the thing. There's certain things that you're you're able to really, you know, go after. And there's certain things at the, the, the right times where you can't. You know, if you got kids and certain things and you shouldn't be spending a certain amount of money or doing certain things, you could be bold in a different aspect. You can be bold in your intentions. You can be bold in your actions and not always bold with money, bold with traveling, bold with your job and things like that. So I think that's one thing that when people hear, oh, I'm not bold. Well, you can be. You can be bold sitting yes. down writing emails. You can be bold, you know, when, be, going into the shower, cold showers. We talk about that a lot. That's yep. a bold action. If you don't do that, that's being bold. I'll tell you, the moment that you don't want to do something that you know you should do and you do it, that's being bold. That's simple, people. It's that and simple. I'm not. That comes along with it. Yes. Astronaut. You feel incredible. I, I, this day got away from me, and I know I still have to write today, and it's late, and so I have to be bold, and I have to write no matter what. So you just gave me the cut the throat sign. That means shut up. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, subscribe. Link to right below the show. Until next time, stay inspired. start doing your research now, you know, there's going to be a lot of information that you're going to get. But one thing I will say is that you do have access to, you know, Bill, uh, Dr. Brian, things like that, where we can confirm and talk about the different things. Cause like I said, the, the due diligence part of it is really doing the research part, because as you heard Bill say, the standards that are there are not cutting it, you know, and the way that you feel, cause a lot of doctors, that was one big thing for me. Um, I've said this on a bunch of podcast ago i don't remember which one but um i had low testosterone coming out of high school and nothing that i did was going to fix that so i take it you know and a lot of people want to reverse this they don't want to be taking things if it's the thing for you that you need you may you need to make sure it's the right thing for you and it needs to be properly dosed and the right amount for you and all that stuff so stop looking at yourself as broken i'm going to say that probably every episode I think that's such a great way to look at it. 
and get what you need to make yourself whole and continue and feel the best that you can. Yeah. <laughs> mm Yeah, you got you got to take responsibility. That's all I got for that one. 